Admiral Thomas M. Dyke has retired, welcoming you to another true exploit of the silent service. In the Philippines, heroic Filipino guerrillas, together with remnants of our forces, had banded together into what became officially USAFIP, the United States Army Forces in the Philippines. Our story starts on North Luzon in July 1944, two and a half years after the Japanese had overrun the Philippines. Here was the headquarters of this guerrilla army, at least on this particular day. GHQ was a highly mobile affair. Each time the enemy neared it, it would fade away into the jungle to reappear elsewhere like a ghost. USAFIP had been cut off from two-way radio contact with the outside world for 17 long months, ever since their transceiver had been captured by the Japanese in March 1943. So this was a memorable day. Everything we need. Tubes, condensers, batteries. <laughs> Arturo, you're a wonder. Where did you make your raid? Baguio. We sent in two of our girls with a case of sake captured from the patrol boat, remember? Uh. <laughs> we lost one man, but His Imperial Highness needs eight new radio men. <laughs> How long will it take you to get it all assembled? Oh, I think I'll have it working by tomorrow. Good. Then at last we can communicate with General MacArthur in Australia. Tell him what we must have. What makes you so sure we've got any forces left in Australia? We've established contact, sir. Good. General MacArthur's headquarters in Brisbane is standing by on this frequency for our message at 2200 tonight. Quote this. Our most urgent needs are rifles, ammunition, hand grenades, aerobrine for malaria, new wonder drug for infection, our food supply is desperately short, but it's secondary. Our forces consist at the present that is not including sick and wounded. An SWPA has ordered U.S. submarine Seawolf to transport supplies previously itemized. Seawolf will arrive Luzon night of 19 October. Landing areas and secondary rendezvous points are to be designated by you as soon as possible. We'll advise recognition signals. Personal inquiry from General MacArthur, sir. Wishes to know what American Army officer is presently senior with your forces. Notify General MacArthur that Lieutenant Colonel Arthur Wilson is our senior surviving officer and my second in command. If the General asks about my predecessors, Maitland, O'Brien, and Gorman, tell him the enemy's captured all three of them and shot them in the past two and a half years. That's why I'm senior. 2200 on October 19th, no sign of the sea wolf. 2200 on October 20th, nothing. Eight days overdue and still no sign of her. Look, Lieutenant, you're lucky to be getting one box of ammunition. If this raid we're planning doesn't get us some more pretty quick, we'll be throwing rocks at the enemy. They're sending another submarine. Headquarters assume Seawolf is sunk with no word from it for more than a month. How soon? If they stall around, it'll be too late. The message says the submarine Gar, Lieutenant Commander Ferrara commanding, is loading right now. Date of arrival they hope will be November 21st. She will make her passage on surface for all possible speed. Did you say Ferrara? Yes, why? I guarantee you this cargo will get through. If Ferrara has to shove the enemy out of the way with its bare hands. You know this guy? I went to the Naval Academy with Duke Ferrara. His real name's Maurice. Nobody ever called him that, though, at least not more than once. He made All-American on the Navy football team. He's a quiet, soft-spoken guy, but when he gets into action... <whistles> Sounds like the man for us. Well, we better get on with it. They want us to set up new rendezvous points for the guard. They do not want us to use the same ones we have for the Seawolf. Who wants to know how much longer, Godowski? Oh, we still got three more fish to offload after this one. Call it an hour. Okay, step on the gas. What for? What do you mean, what for? So, what's all a big hurry? What kind of a patrol is this, anyway? Eighteen of our fish going ashore and only six left in the forward torpedo room? Yeah, nothing but rifles and ammo and junk and more supplies than a supermarket coming aboard instead. All right, you guys, quit sounding off. I'm not the one that hands out the missions around here. Now, let's get moving. A 
I've been shifting the cargo around trying to get some kind of a trim on her. When we make our first dive, we'll see just how well you did. If we never surface again, Alan, remind me to give you a bad mark on your fitness report. <laughs> I'll do that, sir. I tried telling the people at MacArthur's headquarters this pig boat had never been designed to lug 30 tons of cargo. When they detached us from submarine command, handed us over to the Army, I... Well, I suppose we ought to be thankful they didn't ask us to fly the ship. I didn't want to bother you with this, Captain, while you were putting in 24 hours a day with the intelligence boys, but... Uh... You mean the crew? Yes, sir. Chief Calhoun, Captain wants you on the bridge. Well, what's the answer? I'm sure you know it, if anybody does. Well, this is the Guard's 14th patrol, Captain. We're all pretty proud of our combat record on the first 13. But when we go out with only six torpedoes aboard, and we're all loaded up with supplies like a transport, well, sir, you can't blame the men for thinking we've drawn some kind of a supply ferry duty rather than a shooting mission. It's any comfort. There's likely to be plenty of shooting. Only this time, the guard's probably going to be on the receiving end. We're under secret orders, Calhoun. But you can tell the men this. It's no discredit to the guard. The job we're going on is even more vital than any combat patrol. Yes, Mr. Bergner. I'll tell them. Is that all, sir? That's all. the long run north from Brisbane, the guard transited almost entirely on the surface. This was to achieve maximum speed, even in perilous waters. She dove only when Jap planes or warships were sighted or picked up on the radar as being in dangerous proximity. It doesn't look like much on a chart, but from Brisbane to Luzon is 3,500 miles. Through the same waters where the guard's sister submarine, the Sea Wolf, had been sunk with all hands on this same mission a few weeks ago. So for 13 days and nights, Guard drove northern at maximum speed in hope of carrying out her orders to reach her rendezvous on the 14th night. Clear out, you guys. I gotta stow this bread someplace. Clear out to where? There ain't room on this pig boat to stand up, let alone sit down. I'll buy you a crying towel when we get back to Brisbane. You don't think I've been sweating myself to death for four days baking bread because I wanna? Skipper says bake, I bake. Range to Point Jose, 5,500 yards. Point bearing, zero, four, three. Ground scope. All the batches up all right, Alan. Yes, sir, that's Derek Geis, all right. The enemy garrison's less than five miles on either side and a major Japanese naval base at San Fernando. I hope those guerrillas knew what they were talking about. Up scope! Any sign of a signal yet, sir? Pretty dark inshore. Left, 10 degrees rudder! Left. Ten degrees rudder. There's a smoke smudge on the beach. Yeah, I can see them now. Two white discs to the right of the smudge. Two more on the left. Two hundred meters apart, as near as I can estimate. Sounds as though everything's the way intelligence set it up. Not unless all the signals are correct. Don't forget that, Alan. That may be what caught the Sea Wolf. Maybe enemy agents among the guerrillas, who knows? That's the reason headquarters made it a whole series of signals this time. Well, Lantern under the left marker just went on. What's the time? 1900 exactly, sir. So far, so good, then. It's due right on the hour. Headquarters figured if there were spies among them, they'd have less of a chance of getting a hold of all the signals. Any sign of the banker yet? Uh, there's something coming out from shore now, but I can't quite make it out. The light's so bad. It's a banker, all right. Are they showing the signal, sir? Yeah, they're showing a signal, but it sure doesn't look right to me. Here, take a look, Alan. It's supposed to be a Chinese flag displayed for five minutes after the hour, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> that sure doesn't look like any Chinese flag I ever heard of, sir. The lower part of it, it's all sort of, sort of curved, kind of. That's the way it looked to me. I thought I was seeing things. 
How are you going to surface him? That bank is heading straight for us. I don't know. That flag sure looks cockeyed. But the rest of the signal's all right. We could be putting ourselves right into a trap. Approach the ship. They'll give the men on the bank a quick gander at us without us staying on the surface long enough to be sitting ducks. Now the scope. Rudder right that ship. All ahead, standard. Four men aboard. One of us wearing what looks like a Navy cap. Got a gamble, Alan. Surface! Captain? No, sir. I'm Bergner, the exec. The captain's waiting for you on the bridge. Hello, Duke. Hello. Don't you remember me? No, I... Kent! Eddie Kent! Of course, Eddie. It's just that I hardly expected to meet old friends here. Well, I guess maybe I look a little different, too. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Arthur Wilson, Captain Ferrara. Captain? Is Daragayos clear? Are you all set to unload? Daragayos is compromised. Large Japanese forces with artillery moved in last week. I guess maybe they were tipped off by our activity in this area. We don't know. What about San Esteban? Last we heard, still open. Oh, we'll get moving Prano for San Esteban. All ahead, two-thirds. Bring a left smartly to course 305. I said the last we heard. Now, that was four days ago. Well, let's hold a good thought. We'll know mighty soon. Well, I'm not taking the gar on the surface past that Japanese shooting gallery at San Fernando. Let's get below. Clear the bridge! Dive! Dive! I don't mind telling you, we almost didn't stick our necks out for you guys. I was awful leery of that cockeyed flag of yours. <laughs> I don't blame you. What happened, Duke, was that General MacArthur's intelligence section said to use a Chinese flag as one of our recognition signals. I suppose they figured it'd be no trouble for us to buy one at the nearest store. Did you ever try to remember what a Chinese flag should look like? No. Well, we finally sweated that one out. The only red cloth we could locate for the field was a skirt we borrowed from one of our girls. That's how come our flag had such a funny-looking lower edge. What do you mean, girls? The gorillas have their wives with them? Wives, nothing. There are plenty of Filipino girl guerrillas. They take the same chances as the rest of us. What's the matter, Eddie? You used to be the biggest chow hound at the academy. I guess I'm just out of practice. It's just that this is the first time in a year and a half I've seen a plate and a tablecloth and all the rest of the fixings. Kind of threw me for a loop. Well, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I've got to get back to the conning tower. Just a second, Duke. I've been carrying this ever since we knew you were on your way. To my wife and kids back in San Francisco. I'd appreciate it if you'd mail it when you get back to Australia. Sure, Eddie. Anything else I can do for you? How about you, Colonel? Anything I can do for you? As far as my family knows, I've been dead for three years. Leave it that way. Are we off San Esteban, Duke? Just about. I'm going to surface in a minute. Well, I'd like to suggest you put a party ashore in a rubber boat to scout the area. For all we know, the Japanese could be there in force. Down scope. Is 
Say, that, uh, that Colonel Wilson, he's kind of an oddball, isn't he? Well, Duke, all three of the guys who held his job before him were caught and shot. And according to the dope we got after the interrogation they put them through, the firing squad probably looked good to them. As far as Wilson is concerned, he's living on borrowed time. The guy just doesn't see any point to raising his family's hopes and then making them go through it all over again. Yeah. Surface! All clear on those signals? All clear! Come on. One-third. All ahead, one-third. Gun crews on deck. Gun crews on deck. Open all deck hatches. Open all hatches. Very well. San Esteban's wide open, although there were Japanese patrol boats around earlier tonight. Uh, Colonel Mendoza, Captain Ferrara. We've got our hatches open, the cargo set for unloading. How soon can you start? The boats will be here in a minute, Capitan. We have as many men ready to help as you have room aboard your ship. Glad to hear it. You understand with our hatches open, we're just asking for it. We can't dive in that condition. I understand, and I appreciate the risk you're running, Captain. Leave it alone. You can't handle this one, Peanut. It's too heavy. Come <laughs> on. Don't put any more stuff in that fourth boat or you'll swamp it. Bring your next boat alongside. Mmm. That tastes so good, like cake. You're a girl. It's a dame. You think it'd make difference who pulled trigger? Japanese just as dead, huh? Yeah, I guess you're right. You like my bread, huh? First I tasted in three years. Did you get them posted? Yes, a minute bow and stern with hand grenades. Taking no chances on enemy frogmen sneaking up on us. Why is your radar operating only to see what, Captain? So that any Japanese shore radar installation can't pick it up. Your people understand that two blasts on the whistle will be the alarm, Colonel. Now your men will have to jump for their boats or swim for it. We'll be hightailing away and diving as fast as we close those hatches. Put two engines on charge, Allen. Aye, aye, sir. Isn't the noise going to be a dead giveaway, Duke? I haven't got any choice. Our batteries are run way down. Wait a second. Thank you. You gonna need me for a couple of minutes? I guess not. Why? Just got an idea. Where do you stash this stuff after you get it ashore? We'll carry it 40 miles into the hills. Safe. We'll definitely never find it. 40 miles, huh? Here, you'll do better with these on that hike. Here's some smokes for you, too. Sami. <laughs> the unloading is almost completed, sir. The last boat will be leaving in a minute. Good, we'll get underway at once. I'm sorry, sir, but Colonel Mendoza says he and his officers must see you for a minute on the foredeck. I argued with him, but he says they won't leave until you do. Get all hatches closed, prepare to dive. I'll be back in a minute. Aye, aye, sir. So long, Eddie. Goodbye, Colonel. Now get on the banker, please. Good luck. Well, what's the trouble, Colonel? 
we could not leave without thanking you and every man aboard the car for what you have done for the Philippines. When our nation has regained its freedom, we shall not forget you. Send the following message to General MacArthur's headquarters. Mission accomplished. What's the idea? Is this some kind of a joke? Well, sir, uh, none of those guys had shoes or, or sweaters or practically anything. So we sort of, uh, well, uh, we gave them a few things we could get along without. Well, it's a fine looking outfit, I must say. Uh, yes, sir. The uh, steward's busy for a moment, sir. Uh, what would you like for breakfast? Oh, it's been a long night. I'll have a fruit juice and a nice big platter of bacon and eggs and uh, toast, coffee, lots of coffee. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you could change that order a little. There, there isn't any fruit juice. We're out of bacon. There's no eggs, and there isn't any bread for toast. We got coffee, though. What do you mean? Uh, well, sir, uh, when we saw what a loaf of bread meant to that bunch, I. Uh, I sort of turned over most of the Gar stores to them. We all figured they could use them. Well, then, just bring me whatever you didn't hand out. I can see we're going to be on short rations going back to the base for three weeks. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Message from General MacArthur. Well done, Gar. Personal congratulations to all hands. Posted on the bulletin board, Alan. Yes, sir. Yes? The crew asked me to give you a message from each one of them, sir. Everybody aboard respectfully requests in the future the guard go on more missions like this one. Well, you tell them I feel the same way. I'll see what I can do about it. Yes, sir. It is an old adage that to help a friend is one of life's greatest rewards. No man who is in the guard will ever dispute it. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. And now I'm very happy to introduce to you Captain Duke Ferreira, who was commanding officer of the Guard during the events you have just seen. Duke, you saw a different and interesting phase of the war on this patrol. We certainly did, Admiral. All of us on the Guard were extremely impressed with the tremendous spirit of those great Philippine people and the brave Americans who stayed with them to continue the fight. Did the Gar carry out any more patrols of this nature? Yes, our very next patrol was to the same locality. We landed 16 Army Rangers and Philippine Scouts and helped prepare for our invasion of Luzon. Were the guerrillas just as glad to see you? I'm sure they were. We brought them 35 tons of arms and supplies, and they had ready for us three large bundles of intelligence information. Did it turn out to be of value? I believe so. You may recall that the invasion of Luzon and the Lingayen Gulf area several weeks later was made with little or no losses. The men and material we brought in and the intelligence we took out may have contributed somewhat to the extraordinary success of those operations. I hear that they did. Congratulations on a job well done. Thank you. We hope you will be aboard again when we bring you another true adventure of the silent service. Take your dogs and off to fly Through the deep blue country in the ocean We'll control the ocean's wide Come down, down underneath the sea Take the coast for past the world In the future yet to be That we're safe as long as there's 
Underneath the sea 